from the historic Loretto Abbey Chapel. With the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents The Daily TV Mass. Welcome to the celebration of the Daily TV Mass. I am Father Francis Salesiar. The televising of this Mass made possible by contribution from our donors. The first is Mary Ann coming from Ottawa, Ontario, in memory of her late husband, Robert Cumming, who passed away on May 28, 2020. The second is in memory of Gertrude McDonald, who died in May 2021 from an anonymous friend in Thunder Bay, Ontario. The Daily TV Mass Ministry is made possible with the generous contributions of all our donors, and in a special way, our monthly donors. For all of those in the Daily TV Mass community who have asked to be included in our Prayer Intentions book, we pray specially. This month, we pray for all young people called to live life to the fullest. May they see in Mary's life the way to listen, the depth of discernment, the courage that faith generates, and the dedication to service. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. With your spirit. As we continue to celebrate the resurrection, we are called through the liturgy of today not just merely believe and trust in God, but to have a deeper relationship with God. We are called to develop a relationship like a father and child. Let us ask God's mercy for the moments where we have failed to grow in our relationship with God and with one another. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done and in what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Maria Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Constantly shape our minds, we pray, O Lord, with the practice of good works, the trying always for what is better, we may strive to hold ever fast to the Paschal mystery. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After spending some time at Antioch, Paul departed and went from place to place through the region of Galatia and Phrygia, strengthening all the disciples. Now there came to Ephesus a Jew named Apollos, a native of Alexandria. He was an eloquent man, well-versed in the scriptures. He had been instructed in the way of the Lord, and he spoke with burning enthusiasm and taught accurately the things concerning Jesus, though he, only, though he knew only the baptism of John. He began to speak boldly in the synagogue, but when Priscilla and Aquila heard him, they took him aside and explained the way of God to him more accurately. And when he wished to cross over to Acacia, the believers encouraged him and wrote to the disciples to welcome him. On his arrival, Paul greatly helped those who through grace had become believers, for he powerfully refuted the Jews in public, showing by the scriptures that the Messiah is Jesus. 
The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you. When Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father, he said to the disciples, Very truly I tell you, if you ask anything of the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Until now, you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask, and you will receive, so that your joy may be complete. I have said these things to you in figures of speech. The hour is coming when I will no longer speak to you in figures, but will tell you plainly of the Father. On that day, you will ask in my name, I do not say to you that I will ask the Father on your behalf, for the Father himself loves you, because you have loved me and have believed that I came from God. I came from the Father and have come into the world. Again, I am leaving the world and I'm going to the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. I have to admit that these are not the easiest verses in John's Gospel. The portion of the Gospel that we heard is taken from the final discourse of Jesus. In this discourse, Jesus is inviting his disciples and us to enter into a deeper relationship with God the Father. 
He says, ask and you will receive, so that your joy may be complete. Then later, the Father himself loves you. The pandemic that we are hoping to overcome has revealed a prayerful longing in the hearts of many, a prayerful longing that had previously been believed to have almost vanished. But this also poses a challenge for many of us, as our prayers and petitions may not have been answered. We might have lost our own family members or friends. But when we take time to understand, much of that need for prayer was rooted in human need and desire, and not in pursuing the will of God. Most of the time we turn to God in prayer when we find the circumstances of our daily life challenging, threatening, or tragic. But that sort of prayer demonstrates a lack of mutuality, a lack of communication. That sort of prayers does not attempt to connect with how God wishes to see our lives play out. I'm not saying those sorts of prayers are wrong. The invitation that comes from Christ is to have a deeper relationship where we feel deeply that God loves us at all times, rather than just when we are in need, be it materially, physically, or emotionally. In his encyclical, God is love, our Holy Father, Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI, reminds us of the Father's love. I quote, True, no one has ever seen God as he is. And yet, God is not totally invisible to us. He does not remain completely inaccessible. God loves us first, says the letter of St. John, and this love of God has appeared in our midst. He has become visible in as much as he has sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. God has made himself visible. In Jesus, we are able to see the Father. Indeed, God is visible in a number of ways. In the love story recounted by the Bible, he comes towards us. He seeks to win our hearts all the way to the Last Supper, to the piercing of his heart on the cross, to his appearances after the resurrection, and to the great deeds by which, through the activity of apostles, he guided the nascent church along its path. This clearly shows that even though God may seem distant, through Christ, we are able to see the God the Father. And today, Jesus, through the gospel, invites us, ask and you will receive, so that your joy may be complete. None of us understand the complete joy of an intimate relationship with the Heavenly Father. Jesus did understand and know such joy, and yet his earthly life was not without its challenges and difficulties. However, Jesus remained steadfast in his relationship with the God in heaven. We are challenged through our lives to do the same. We are called to imitate Christ. Even though Christ knew God the Father very much, Christ knew the complete joy, what it is to be in, remain in joy, but that did not immune him to experience the earthly suffering. That's a reminder for us. We may have a higher relationship that does not guarantee that we go through, we may not go through life difficulties, sickness and sufferings but we are called to remain steadfast in our relationship with God the Father, no matter what the life brings to us. Sometimes we are so confined to the here and now, 
that we forget what is important in the long run, the real joy, the real happiness, and finally, the life for eternity. When Christ says, you ask anything in my name and the Father will give, not only because Father will give because of my name, because he loves you so much that he is going to give you what you ask. That is a reminder for each of us. We are called to grow in our understanding of that deep love that God wants to have with each of us. So, dear brothers and sisters, let us pray as we celebrate this Eucharist that we might open our hearts and the minds to God in a way that allows him to come into our lives and fill them with that complete joy, a complete joy we cannot imagine or create for ourselves. Let us pray that also let us pray also that our dialogue of prayer may be constant and complete, leading us to a deeper union and relationship with God the Father. Let us bring forth our prayers and petitions. Let us pray for ourselves that we may grow deeper in our understanding about the love that God has for us, and may we cherish that love, and that we may grow in that love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, we are. For our brothers and sisters, family members and friends who find it difficult to go beyond the here and now, who are caught up in the worldly hurt or emotional turmoil, our family issues, that they are not able to reflect beyond that suffering about the love that God has for us. For them, for their liberation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, God. For those who are sick, sick due to various situations, physical problem, emotional problems, psychological problems, and the people who suffer because of violence and war, that they may continue to experience the goodness of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, we are. We pray for all young people called to live life to the fullest. May they see in Mary's life the way to listen, the depth of discernment, the courage that faith generates, and the dedication to service. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord. Lord. Let us make all these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the wine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. forever. Wash me, cleanse me, and sin solid. Pray, dear brothers and sisters, my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the, may the Lord accept the sacrifice, sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to love you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful, for his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all has risen. 
Therefore, overcome with the Paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice once more, giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Thomas our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, 
peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Please join me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart, as though you were already there. I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you, Permit not that I should ever be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. We have partaken of the gifts of this sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth in charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth in peace to love and serve one another. Thanks be to God. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. <laughs>